barakata rekede ko shali barukata rekede ko shali baruka sende ipa de 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 ipa da kata ipa ruka sakata rakati ipa rande ko jagida barukata ako sali barakata mande go shakata mande rekede kada baruka sanda ya le baru sekete baraka sanda le ko barakata blessed be your holy name o god blessed be your holy name o god para we give you glory Father, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you adoration, we show appreciation, Daddy. Ancient of days, Makado Shakata. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Ah, de Brakato Shakata Barakata. Mande Rege de Katabaruze Gede Katabarakata. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit. Father, we lift up your name. Father, we give you all glory and all honor. We exalt your holy name. Ah, Shekete Barakata. He says, faithful is he that promised. Oh, faithful God, we thank you. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for providence. We thank you for life. We thank you for sufficient grace. We thank you for your mercy. He says, your mercies are new every morning. And great is thy faithfulness. Lord, we thank you for your loving kindness. Lord, we thank you for being so faithful. We bless Bless your holy name this hour. We bless you, Lord. We give you praise. Ah, paru sekete barakata. Paru de kaza paru kataya. Leke de go shali paru katarakati. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We bless your holy name. We exalt you, Father. Hallowed be thy name. Thank you, Lord, for the new month. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy and your goodness. In the mighty, mighty name, the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the power in the blood. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for healing. Thank you, Lord, for being so good to us. Blessed be your name forever. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 I am so, so, so excited. Glory to God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for your mercy, Lord. It is by your mercy that we are not consumed. Hallelujah. It's a new month. It's a month of newness. I hear in my spirit that Lord will give you newness. All round newness. Everything shall become new. Glory to God. It's a month of newness. The month of August. God will give you everything brand new. Glory to God. And I get encouraged prophetically from scripture. I'll read it to you. Glory to God. This is the scripture that the Lord placed in my heart this morning for you is a prophetic declaration over your life for this month of August. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 43. I'll read to you verse 18 and 19. That's Isaiah chapter 43. Verses 18 and 19. Glory to God. When a word of God is released over your life, grab it. Grab it. Take it. Believe it. Make it your reality. Glory to God. The prophetic has to do with the word of God. The word of God is the prophetic. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The prophecy, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Glory to God. And that spirit of prophecy is embodied in the scripture. Hallelujah. So don't wait around for people to give you a word of knowledge or to give you prophecy. Glory to God. As much as those are powerful, scriptural prophecy supersedes any other prophecy or word of knowledge because it is the word of God. Hallelujah. And so it says, remember ye not the former things. 
neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Glory to God. Let this be your passion. Newness, all round newness in your family, in your career, in your marriage, in your finances, in your ministry, in your health, in the lives of your children. Let there be all round newness in the mighty name of Jesus. You see, the God we serve is a God of impossibility. Nothing is impossible with God. He says, for man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Glory to God. He says he will make a way in the wilderness and the rivers will flow out of desert. Some of you have been in your desert situation, in your wilderness moment, but God is saying that he will create a way for you out of desert, out of that wilderness. Glory to God. Let this be your prophetic unction, even in this season, even in this month of August. I hear the Lord says, it's raining congratulations. You, under the sound of my voice, you have so many to be congratulated for in this month of August. We come against satanic delays. We come against every satanic embargoes that brings about delays that brings about setbacks, that brings about stagnation, that brings about failure at the edge of breakthrough, that brings about near success syndrome. By the power of the Holy Ghost, I command such embargoes to be lifted even now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. Even your finances. God will give you divine ideas, creative ideas to make wealth, to open streams of income. Glory to God. He says in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, and I'll read to you. He says, but remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth and so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors as it is today. Glory to God. And one of the new things that will happen in your life is the ability the creative ideas, the power, the anointing to obtain wealth. Hallelujah. And so the power to get wealth in this scripture is the physical and mental strength that will supernaturally will be imparted by God to you to acquire riches. Even in this season, God is calling financiers, kingdom financiers. God is ordaining men and women as kingdom financiers to the point that when we need something done in ministry, when we need something done in our places of worship, in churches, things of God, kingdom things, the finances will be available. And we are not going to borrow because we are not borrowers. We are lenders to nations. The church of God will be financed by the people of God themselves. Hallelujah. And so this can happen unless God raises kingdom financiers. Unless God gives us the anointing, the power to create riches. Hallelujah. And so this is what the Lord is saying in this month of August. 
that there will be a newness, even in your finances. Your financial capability will be boosted. Hallelujah. And so the power to get riches, bear you in mind, is not miracle working power. No. The Hebrew word koach used for power in this scripture could refer to force. Miracle working power, ability or strength. And so in this scripture, Moses used koach in, the, in this scripture to refer to the physical and mental capacity of the Israelites for creating wealth, creation of wealth, ability to create wealth. So this power to get wealth was the physical strength to work, the mental faculty to think of ways to make money. In other words, ideas, divine ideas. It takes just one idea, one single idea, inspired by the Holy Spirit to get wealth, to generate money. Hallelujah. And so it was not some miraculous power to command money to fall from heaven. No. Manna fell from heaven in the days of Moses. But this scripture is saying that ideas will be given to you. Ideas will be imparted unto you to create money, to get wealth. Hallelujah. And so God supernaturally impacted this ability to get wet to the people of God, to the Israelites. Therefore, God gave them this power by giving them both the physical fitness and the ideas in their minds to make money. It's all about ideas. There was nothing dramatic or spectacular about this gift. It was as normal as any normal human ability. We have ability by the Holy Ghost. We have ability by the anointing of the Spirit. Hallelujah. In fact, as a matter of fact, in this scripture, if you read preceding Deuteronomy 8.17, Glory to God. The Lord warned the people of God. The Lord warned the Israelites not to say in their heart that he, this ability working in them is their making. Glory to God. Why? Because nothing was spectacular or dramatic about it. Just as the ideas God has already given some of you. Some of you have great ideas. Some of you have great ideas, creative ideas to create or to make, get streams of income, to create streams of income. Glory to God. And it's only the Holy Spirit that gives us those ideas, that will bring it to fruition. Glory to God. And so what did Israel do for God to give them the power to get to wealth? That would be a question. What did those people do for God to give them the power to get wealth? What did they have to continue doing for that power to continue to work in them? Hallelujah. And so through God, though God could have performed miracles to rain money for the Israelites in the desert or the promised land. He promised. The Bible says he pro prospered Israel. He prospered Israel financially through the blessing on their lives and their land. He didn't, he, God can do miracle. God can do anything. God could say, okay, I have an alternative. Let me just open heaven and pour money down. He didn't do that. He didn't do that. But scripture says he prospered the people financially through the blessing on their lives and their land. Some of you got to look around to see 
the blessings that God has surrounded you with. Paradventure in the country where you live, in the community where you live, in the state where you live. There are wells that need to be dug up. There are opportunities that are available that you need to seek. Because they're, they're already available for you. The problem is I say a whole lot of us are lazy. We don't want to, we don't want to seek opportunity. We don't want to look for opportunity. We don't, we lack ideas. Our mindset is restricted. It says he prospered Israel financially through the blessings on their lives and in their land. So it is super important. It's very crucial for us to firmly understand how the blessing of God operates in our lives and then align ourselves with its principles. There are principles that we must align ourselves to. And, but we must fairly must understand how the blessing of God operates in our lives. The opportunities around us. The truth is that the power to get to wealth comes from God. It doesn't come from any other source. It comes from God. God gives all men the power to get wealth. All men. We do not have all the power to prosper. Prosperity and wealth are two different things, remember. To prosper means to succeed, right? Or to thrive, to blossom. It will shock you to, um, to know that many people acquire wealth but never succeed. Glory to God. You can have wealth, you can have riches without succeeding. Wealth, in other words, do not does not guarantee success. Have that clear. Understand that clearly. Wealth, riches, does not guarantee success. Prosperity, in other words, infers an ability to never fail. Or if failure seems imminent, it can be averted. And restitution, Bible says, restores that which was lost or threatened. Wealth may come. Wealth may come and go, depending upon the source of it. God is our resource. Prosperity, wealth, only comes from him. Of course, the enemy does not give you any free gift. A whole lot of people seek wealth, riches, from different sources. Those do not last. The only wealth that lasts is the one that comes from Jehovah, the one that comes from God Almighty. Because he already said he has given us power to get wealth. So why seek it any other means, from any other source? You could get those, but are you succeed? Are you going to succeed? Is it going to last? Hallelujah. So generating wealth comes as a result of obeying God and his word. Comes as a result of not compromising. The minute you step out to look for this world, to look for riches, to look for money, outside of God's will, you are compromising. You're not obeying God. You're not aligning yourself with the precepts of God's word. And so the power to obtain wealth is available to all children of God who align with the word, who obey God. 
is available. You don't have to seek it anywhere else. You don't have to do anything extra but obey God. Align yourself with the precepts of God. The ordinances of God is available to you. The wealth can be, uh, when we talk about wealth, we, we, we don't want to restrict it or limit it to finances. You can be wealthy emotionally. You can be wealthy spiritually. You can be wealthy mentally. So let's broaden our, our dimension, our concept, our mind, that wealth does not necessarily mean financial or money. Hallelujah. But the Lord is saying, as a child of God, as believers, our source of wealth and prosperity is God. I cannot overemphasize this. It can only come from him. Every good gift comes from him. He says that the blessings of God make it rich and adds no sorrows. When God blesses a man, he's giving you that blessing to enjoy. It comes with no baggages. It comes with no stress. And so he says, the blessings of God make it rich and adds no sorrows. But when the, when, when the riches or the prosperity or whatever the case may be, is not from him. It comes with baggages. It comes with uh, things that you got to do. The enemy does not give you any free gift. It's give and take. Hallelujah. Our source of wealth and prosperity is from God. He is able to give us the guarantee that everything we set our hands will prosper. Whatever you lay your hands on this month of August, the rest of the year, as a matter of fact, the rest of your life will prosper. Your hands are anointed. Whatever you touch, will prosper. Whatever you want to do will prosper. The psalmist says in Psalm 1 verse number 3, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. You shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. You bring forth fruit in and out of season. It doesn't matter the economic situation where you are. It doesn't matter the economic situation or what the recess or whatever is going on around you. You bring forth fruit. You are fruitful in and out of season. And the scripture says, and whatsoever you do shall prosper. Everything you work at will go well. Everything you do, you lay your hands on to do, will prosper, will yield results. God is releasing anointing of abundance, even in this season. In the name of Jesus, receive abundance. You know why it will not fail? Because God works with the believer, establishing his covenant. He's a covenant-keeping God. And so if you go to that scripture, the scripture that we began with, let me read it again. But remember the Lord your God. For it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth and so confirms his covenant, which he swore to his ancestors as it is today. One thing with God is that he is a covenant keeper. He keeps his words. The scripture began with the call to remember. It begins with a command. But to remember the Lord, your God. This remembrance is not a passive one. It is an active 
remembrance, a deliberate choice to keep God at the forefront of our minds. Glory to God. In the context of Deuteronomy that we read, this scripture that we read, the Israelites, the people of God, are on the brink of entering the promised land, a place of abundance, a place, a land flowing with milk and honey. And so Moses warns them not to forget God, even in their prosperity. So that's the warning that is directed to us even today. Some of you, when God gives you riches, when God gives you wealth, some of you will place it, as God forbid. Some of that will take precedence over God. But he's saying, remember. But remember you, your God. That is an active command. God is saying, have a daily, make it be intentional about keeping him at the forefront in the midst of your success. He says, for he, it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. And so we must acknowledge the source of our abilities. It is not your making. It doesn't come from you. God is our resource. Your talents, our talents, opportunities, and even to the drive to work hard come from God. You, our, your, that your talent, that skill that you think you have, the opportunities you're seeking after, even the drive to keep on working hard comes from him comes from God. And so it is tempting. It is easy to fall into the trap of self-sufficiency. You often hear people say, I can do bad by myself. I can do good by myself. It is easy. It is tempting to fall into that trap of self-sufficiency, thinking that our success is solely due to our efforts. And so this scripture corrects that misconception, attributing your accolades, your success, our abilities to God Almighty. It says, for it is he who gives you the ability to make wealth. Hallelujah. And scripture says, it says, and so confirm, confirms his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors. Somebody say, God's covenant and faithfulness. He's a covenant keeper. He is a faithful God. He's doing all these things to the people of God to confirm what he had already said, to confirm his covenant. The covenant that he swore to the ancestors. And so one thing with God's provision that it is tied to his covenantal promises. God's provision is tied to his covenant. And so to the Israelites, this was the promise God made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And for us today, it is a reminder of God's faithfulness through the ages fulfilling his promises and caring for his people. God is faithful. And then there is a danger of forgetting. Forgetting. Whatever you do, don't forget where you come from or where God is bringing you out of or where God has brought you out of. If you go back to Deuteronomy chapter 8, Earlier in, the, earlier in the scripture, in that chapter, Moses warns of the dangers of prosperity leading to pride and forgetfulness. Pride. Pride and forgetfulness. It's a danger to forget. We must guard 
against the temptation to forget God when life is going well. Because he gives you the power to make what he can take it, take it away, take it away. He can. It's a privilege. And that privilege can be taken away and be given to the next person. And so we must guard. We must guard against the temptation to forget God or to trivialize God when life is going well, when he has blessed us. Instead, we should cultivate gratitude. We should cultivate gratitude and dependence on him. Recognizing his hand in all that we have, in all that we have accomplished, we attribute it to him. It is all him. As a matter of fact, I was reading, a, I saw a clip video of this single woman that raised her four daughters. And apparently God has blessed her. And I was, I was watching this video clip where she had bought a, a, luxurious, a luxury car, SUV, for the daughters. And when the daughters, when he, when he was talking to, she was talking to her daughter, look, this is for you guys. This is for you. The daughter was thrilled, excited, surprised, shocked. And she asked the mother, who bought this? Do you know the reply the, 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 the mother gave her? The mother said, God bought it. God. That was the answer. The daughter asked her, who bought the car? And the mother answered, God did. She just said, God. That's gratitude. That's gratitude. That's humility. And so we should cultivate gratitude and dependence on him, recognizing his hand in all that we have accomplished, recognizing his hand in all that we have acquired, in all that we have. Hallelujah. And so in our daily lives, how do we remember the Lord our God? I just mentioned one way. Gratitude. Fellowship with him. Thanksgiving. You must acknowledge his provision in our successes, in our accomplishment. And last but not the least, by being generous with what we have. Don't be stingy with your time. Don't be stingy with your resources. Because God is a generous God. To whom much is given, much is expected. Be generous with what you have. Hallelujah. And so as we go through life, especially in times of abundance, if you don't take anything away from this teaching, take this away. Let this be your takeaway this morning. That as we go through, as you go through life, when God has blessed you with abundance, let us heed to the words of Deuteronomy 8.18. Remember the Lord your God. Acknowledge that he is the source of your abilities and blessings. Trust in his faithfulness and live in a way that reflects his goodness. May we never forget the one who gives us all we need to produce wealth and live abundantly in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so this scripture, to conclude, does not say that God gives you wealth. Again, there is no way in this 
scripture that says that God gives you wealth. It says that he gives you the power to get wealth. He gives you the power, the anointing, the grace, the ideas to get wealth. That means you have the power to create. You have the power to obtain. You have the power to assimilate. You have the power to possess wealth. God gives the power. You are the one who works to obtain the wealth by the wisdom and the power of God. You got to go out there and do something. You got to create, put those ideas into use to generate wealth, to create that multiple streams of income. You got to give God something to work on, to blow on. You don't just sit around. Use your creative ability to generate riches, to generate money. Glory to God. And so, Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you all adoration. Covenant keeping God. You are the way maker. You are the promise keeper. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Father, we exalt thee. Father, we worship you. Heavenly Father, hallowed be thy name. You are God all by yourself. You reign in eternity. You are the eternal rock of ages, the almighty God, the creator of heaven and earth. Hallowed be thy name. Thank you, Lord, for your mercies. Thank you, Lord, for creative abilities. Thank you, Holy Spirit of the living God. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus, the son of David. Jesus, the Prince of Peace, the Rose of Sharon, the King of Glory. After the order of blind Bartimaeus, Lord, show us your mercy. We plead mercy. In any way, in any form that we have been lazying around, that we have not put the abilities, the power, the anointing to create wealth. We have not aligned with the word. We have not been obedient. Lord, we ask for mercy. Show us your mercy, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Spirit of the living God, have your way. Holy Ghost, assist us, help us, empower us. Grant us the ability to put ideas into use. You grant us creative ideas to produce wealth. To be able to uncover opportunities that are available to us. Spirit of the living God, have your way. Lord, overwhelm us. Teach us, guide us, direct us, Holy Ghost. Sir. We partner with you in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. He says that yokes shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Every yoke of lack, every yoke that brings about laziness, that brings about slothfulness, that brings about slackness, yokes of darkness, yokes of Poverty and lack, yokes of setbacks, yokes of stagnation, be broken, be broken by the anointing of anointing of the Spirit in the name of Jesus. I lift satanic embargoes that brings about limitations, that brings about failure at the edge of breakthrough, that brings about spiritual laziness, 
physical weariness. Let the embargo be lifted by the fire of God in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We give you all the praise and all the glory because I know it is done. Thank you for the power to get to wealth. In the name of Jesus, we bless you, Lord. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you all adoration. In the mighty, mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. It is well with you. Your newness has started. God will rebrand you new. God will make all things new in your life, even in this season. Receive it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God empower you in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. It is well with you. Receive power. Receive the anointing to get wealth. God is calling you out as a kingdom financier in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the living Jesus. God bless you and happy, happy new month. Happy new month. Your month of newness in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Subscribe to the channel. The Transforming Ministries, the Lord bless you. I will come back again to be with you. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for connecting. God bless you. Bye-bye.